In the world of surfing, the name Peter Druin is right up there in its roll call of stars. He was the Australian champion in 1970 and in the same year ranked number one in the world. Now a documentary team is hoping the story will change attitudes in this male-dominated sport and inspire others who are struggling with their identity. Well, I grew up in Los Angeles, started surfing in the late 70s, competed on the NSSA, WSA, turned pro. Uh, 1986 to 1991, I was on the pro tour. Fantastic times. My career ended abruptly. I was living in Sydney at the time. I started writing for magazines, so I got interested in sort of surf journalism. Moved back to Los Angeles for a while, was the editor at Surfing Magazine for two years, and then moved to New York for 10 years. And along the way, I did a lot of writing about a lot of different topics, but surfing was always there. And uh, when I found out about Westerly Wendina, Peter Druin living as a woman, I was fascinated and I went to Australia to get the story. I first encountered him, he put on something called the Super Challenge in 1984. He called out Mark Richards, who was then the four-time world champion. At the time, Peter Druin was, I think, 35 years past his surfing prime. It was much like, I think he was kind of drawing from Muhammad Ali and George Foreman's Rumble in the Jungle. It was this idea of this massive show one-on-one -on -one and all this drama. And he'd taken out an ad in a magazine and he was naked. He had only underwear on and he had ketchup slathered all over him. And he was standing in a kind of crucified position. And, and there were all these uh, taunts on the page. You know, I will kill or be killed. I'm going to prove to you that I'm the master of the surfboard. And I thought, this guy's fantastic. I grew up surfing Malibu, and I was, he was long gone by the time I got there, but Mickey Dora was always there. The sort of ghost of Dora loomed at Malibu, and it felt um, rebellious. Surfing felt really rebellious, and that's the world that I came into. And I, I literally watched it you know, gr go to being exactly the opposite. I mean, almost feeling like right wing or, or extremely conservative. That's disappointing to me. So in 2008, Westerly came out. Peter Drone came out as Westerly on Australian national television. And it was a huge spectacle, and it was in the newspapers, and it was sort of this first transgender surfer. But the thing is, is, you know, Peter Drone was, he loved to shock people. He shocked his peers by undergoing a sex change and changing his name to Westerly. Most people thought, oh, this is yet, and this is maybe just a little bit of a charade, and, and this is temporary, and this is maybe a way, a publicity stunt, and, you know, this isn't real. And so I went out kind of a, about a year after that to write this profile of Westerly. Legit, but she was really kind of campaigning for herself and, and, you know, a little bit wanting to sort of spin the story in terms of my um, metamorphosis from Peter into Westerly. Mm -hmm. And again, I sort of started fact-checking and, 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 of course, getting um, quotes from Peter Druin's peers. Arguably at that time, Druin was the best Australian in the world. He just had this smile and warmth. He was the epitome of an Australian male surfing hero. I just, I think it's really, really sad that there's so much closed-mindedness in the surf community. I won't deny Westley was absolutely strange, and she still is one of the more outrageous people I've ever met, but also vulnerable and real in a way that most people aren't. There would be a lot of times when I'd be walking around with Westley and I'd see people doing double takes as if we're a couple, let's say. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I forgot that this is someone that mo is this sort of pariah that everyone's going, well, oh my God, the, the, the freakish person. It was, I didn't feel like that. Westerly is, is definitely complicated, and I wrote very honestly. I mean, I, I feel I can, I feel I did the best I could. I mean, everyone's version of the truth will vary. I could look myself in the mirror and say, I did this honestly, this is how this thing went, and this is how, what I felt along the way, and this is sort of how I perceived it all. And my, I guess one of my biggest fears was, and especially as transgender has become such a popular topic, is I didn't want to um, look like I was taking advantage of or exploiting Westerly in any way.